بگیره یه Yeah. Representing Hopthorne. Representing Hopthorne. Hopthorne. Hop Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you for asking. One moment. Yes. Be aware that we are here, but one moment, please. Be aware that we are here. Is this coming through? Yeah. Yes, it is. You are interested in our concepts. Yes. They affect you as well. Yes, they do. They, they are part of who you are in many ways. You will adapt many things about us to your nature eventually. Yes, your I can. Your nature has much sound and it is effective on the way that things are permitted in your planet. The harshness of sound can also be interpreted as negative to you. However, it is not always so. Your understanding of sound is primitive. It makes me feel like I should start at the very beginning. But the very beginning is too far. I could never possibly explain everything from the very beginning. A download it, may be preferable. Perhaps you should ask questions of your present understandings and I will bring it into <clears throat> a greater understanding. Perhaps that's where we should start. Very well, thank you. I would like to know what is the relationship between the seven Hathors and the seven sisters of the Pleiades. Ah, a different kind of question altogether. This has nothing to do with sound, but it does have to do with uh, the great divide in the universe. Just like the human and many of the different species have divided brains, you also have divided species. These were a divided species many centuries ago. And now they live as if they are separate from one another, but they cannot possibly live separately in the sense that they are always in energy communication with one another. They need one another's energy to survive. And yet, even though they are not in the same realm at this time, they are of the same thought process, the same understanding, and the same movement, if you will. Now, they will come together again one day, but the time is not yet, and there is some doubt whether they do understand each other at this point. They have grown apart. Does that answer your question? Yes, so they're two, they're, they're one, but they're in separate. They're divided. They're divided. Yes. Very well. Um, I also had a question. Why was the Egyptian ritual to name the seven Hathers before they can enter the paradise in the distant stars? What is that about? They had to name them? Is, is that, what was the question? I could not understand it quite. Why was there an Egyptian ritual 
to name the seven hathers to enter paradise in the distant stars. Oh, that is very easy. Because there is, because the, the ritual for the Hathorns is that they must be prepared for burial and for sending off. And this was not actually a ritual for their burial or for their, their death, but it's actually a ritual for a continuation of life in a new place. So they were actually just prepared to be sent to the new place because the ritual was to prepare them in their mind, body, and soul for a new kind of cultural experience. So therefore their cultural experience did change when they moved. And that is why. And it was necessary for them to go because the people did not understand them and it was not time for them to be on earth in the way that they wanted to be, in the way that the culture would understand who they were in a very real sense. So they had to move on. And the ritual was actually a happy bon voyage, if you will. And it was to give them a great blessing to move to the paradise that they were going to. Actually, it was their home world. That is why it was called paradise, not because it was an actual paradise, but because in their hearts it was where they were longing to go, and that would be a paradise to anyone. Would that have any uh, benefit to those who are here in this moment of now on Earth? Yes, it would have some benefit because there are some here longing to go back to their homelands as well. And many of you have shared your longing to be in another place, to be in your home planets, and to understand what it's like to live there again. However, you have chosen right now your third dimensional life. So, but unlike the Hawthorns, you are able to communicate with the world around you and your need to, to be here is sustained. So now you must live your third dimensional life, at least a great percentage of you. There will be a few of you that will leave the earth at specific times and not return. But that is not something that I can discuss with you because that has to do with other things that I do not prepare cannot prepare you for. Very well, thank you. And also, um, what is the relationship between the Syrians and the Hathors? The Syrians are from Sirius, of course. So, and the Hathors are from the Orion Belt. Therefore, there was a union when they met on Earth. Of course, there was some disagreement about why different species were coming and why they were trying to manipulate the people in different ways. So, but their relationship ended up to be friendly because they were all looked at as supernatural. Even though they told the earthlings and those that are on the earth at that time that they were not, but they finally got an understanding through that they wanted to be respected as just royalty and not a god. Now, other than that, Ra was a, an exception to that rule, and there were several others that did want to be worshipped after a time, but this was not the norm. And the sirens on Earth, is there any relationship with the sirens? The sirens were the the priestesses of the mermaid. And yes, they were seen as great and powerful beings and did communicate in the councils of Atlantis and those other places. The Egyptians were also aware of Atlantis as well as the Syrians, but only for a short time before Atlantis was gone. So is there a connection between the siren sound and the Hathor sound? Oh, of course. Yes. There are 
the the sounds of the half horns and the sounds of the sirens are used in very similar ways. They bring and they can manipulate the different centers of the brains with different species, different sounds for different species, but yet they are manipulative in their sound usage, yes. The brain does respond to different sounds in different ways, and especially at ultrasonic frequencies, if you call it that, I'm not sure. But it, it does affect the brains in ways, if it is attuned to them, in a very specific way. Now, the sirens and the hawthorns knew how to direct sound waves directly to those portions of the brain that would be affected for whatever purpose. We, we do have our purposes. Sometimes it, is in, sometimes it is used as a weapon. It will just paralyze the person. And that is how we would stop someone from attacking or someone from shooting a gun or using a weapon of some sort. We would use the sound waves to affect the brain for them to not be able to use that part of the body or be paralyzed in fullness or to do things or perhaps move away from us as well. So if there are certain beings in the universe that when are, when they are close to you, they can be harmful just by being in their presence because of different things that are around them, different kinds of bacteria and things of that nature, and perhaps even radiation or different kinds of um, viruses and things of this nature. So we would actually have them move away from us by using certain sounds that would affect that portion of the brain that would give them the message to move away. Of course, when you're meeting new species, you have to learn the brain rather quickly. But since we have known about 75 different species, we learn the brain very quickly. It is similar in about 80%. Some of the brains that we have learned are not specific to the way we use our sound so it had to be changed and so therefore we do know how to manipulate them with sound at this point. Um, it is not a negative thing. We do not ever manipulate anyone who is doing a friendly work or we are communicating with or teaching or anything of this nature but we will help them to learn how to use the sound in this way. Now, our vocal capacities, this is not what we sound like. Our vocal capacities are based in uh, megahertz and sonic systems. Does that make sense? We call it something entirely different from where we're coming from. And it goes from very, very low to very, very high. But it sounds very different than anything you've, you've heard. It, and the reason is because of modulation. Do you understand modulation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can change it and put yes. depth, depth into the modulation. You see, you are hearing a single modulation on this voice. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. We can use several kinds of modulation to change the effects of the voice and bring it into understanding. So when we do new, meet a new spirit, species that is hostile, we immediately go through a, a gradual changing of modulation till we find that brain point that affects them in some way and then work with that. Very well, thank you. So the sounds that I'm hearing while I'm toning, it's um, in different levels, different vibrational uh, sound and yes. level. Yes, you are diff hearing different, mod well, we'll say modulations for now, but there are only single modulations that are separated by distance. Does that make sense to you? I will... 
run that over in my mind so I can understand it. <laughs> yes, you are hearing singular modulations separated by, you would call it time space, and we would call it distance. However, yes. because time space is necessary for the different modulations to be separated so that you can get the proper in information through the different modulations. Now let me explain to you why there are so many different sounds but in a, only a single modulation. The single modulation in your brain affects small portions of the brain that brings forth different kinds of information that is necessary for that moment. Different emotional responses and different um, thought processes. It is not that we are manipulating the brain, we are just using these modulations for stimulus for you. Does this make sense? Yes it does, thank you. So these stimuli that we are giving to you are helping you with your understanding of the Hawthorn, the sirens, and many other things because this informational point where this is stored because humans do have the capacity in the future with your evolutionary development to create these sounds and modulations in the future but it is not the near future and but we see that in the human brain there is all things which makes you very unique there is all things in the godlike quality because of course every single individual and species has the godlike quality within them, the fire. However, some of them have a limited aspect of the, the god flame. We are not sure why that is, but humans do not have a limited aspect of the god flame and are able to do more things than most species. Now, there are other species with this same godlike flame within them and can create all the same things that humans can but there are some species such as those that did not start out as warm-blooded creatures that have a limited aspect to it they will grow into that aspect of full godliness as they become a warm-blooded creature which is part of evolution if even theirs is evolution so this modulations and frequencies is not put in there because it is too harmful for that system sounds and of this nature and modulation can destroy them so they cannot have it at this time does this make sense to you yes yes very good, thank you. I'll pass the mic for now. Rowie? Greetings, dear one. Yes. I have a little bit of a comparison I want to understand more between your uh, understanding of sound and music. On Earth, as you probably well know, we have seven notes varying yes. different octaves, and we also have a certain sound frequency we are able to pick up. How does this relate to what you are able to do and what can you do beyond this? Very good question because it is a relevant question for humanity. You have taken, you have come from single modulation notes and made them greater with the depth of bringing them into chords as you call them and different aspects of creation with different instruments to make them modulate differently. Mm -hmm. However, all these earthly third dimensional sounds fall in a single dimension. Does that make sense to you? Totally. And so therefore when we come to your planet and listen to your music, it is one dimensional in the sense that it is not the depth that we can produce. Our modulations can reach out into space even 
as yours can as well, but only in a limited way, without amplification. Now, even with amplification, the greatest the third dimension can do would be a second dimensional aspect, which means that your, your first dimensional aspect is the actual sounds put together and moved together in a modulation that is very apparently good to, for your ears to hear. Now, you cannot hear some of the modulations that you use. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Because some of the modulation used even on the third dimension cannot be heard. Yes. And therefore, in the second modulation, I'll say, the second degree of modulation, this second part that cannot be heard is a uh, part of what affects the brain also. It is what reaches the emotions in a greater way. That is the second part of your modulation. The first part is enjoyment. The second part is the modulation. Now with the word, words added, it becomes also intellectual. But that is not part of the music necessarily. It is the first modulation and the second modulation that is so effective for humanity because the parts that are not heard of your music are what affect the emotions. There are certain ways to put things together that affect the emotions. Now, you th it sounds like there are certain portions of the music that are actually speaking to you. Do you feel that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the emotional attachment with the unseen, unheard portions. So therefore, there are seven different realms of modulation. And you, you can possibly do two. Now there are those pieces of musical modulation that do not affect the emotion very much. Do you, do you realize that, or at least for some people? Can you expand on that? Yes, not all music on your world affects people emotionally. Ah, yes, correctly, yes. I think what people are in vibration with, they naturally attract with their music. Therefore, some of the unheard is not effective on them because they are not attuned to their emotions properly. If you are attuned to your emotions properly, music will have an effect on you. If you are not attuned to your emotions properly, then it will not. Okay. There are those that. that are attuned to their emotions, but it is not properly, they will still be affected. However, some have blocked out this second part of the r resonation of the music and do not want to feel the emotional portion. Or even the first portion, for that matter. Okay. okay. So, so, let's say, let's say um, um, a spoken, spoken word, word or intention word. over the sounds or the music. Yes. This would add an extra dimensionality to the music, per se? It adds the intellect part, but it also adds the part also that emphasizes the invisible because it adds words to the it adds intellect to the emotion does that make sense to you okay so yeah, that that does. the intellect is talking to the brain and the emotion is speaking to the body and therefore put together they are very effective so I'm looking into areas of um, sonic healing um, is yes. there any advice you can give to us about healing with sonics and your experience? Yes. When, when you are working with sonic healing, feel the resonation of Reiki. You know what Reiki is. Uh -huh. We thought that the, you would because it is a human word from the Orient. Um, we chose that one so that more people would know. However, there is vibration and actually sound 
in vibration. In every vibration there is sound. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Even though you do not hear or participate in that sound in a sense that um, it is not audible to you. But there, when you do Reiki, there is sound going into the body as well as that energy. The sound that is going into the body modulates itself with the energy of the person that is getting the healing. Do you understand this so far? So that works on an energetic level rather than a cellular level, or both? Correct, uh, and both, because on the cellular level, each cell is also vibrating and giving off sound of its own nature. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So therefore they work together. Awesome. Thank you so much. But that was I did not answer your question yet. Oh. <laughs> now, if you were to bring... I noticed that many of you bring soft music into your Reiki sessions that move along with your energies and are equivalent to modulations for helpfulness because they are calming. Do you understand that? Okay, if you would yeah. remove those modulations and bring the OM into your, the OM is universal as you know, bring an OM into the vibration of the healing, that would be your sound supervisor, saying that that modulation is what is making everything come to the same vibration, the same sound the same audio pitch or whatever, then after that the intention is to move that through the body so that it can perfect what is in the body in that modulation. Do you understand? Once everything in the body is at the same modulation as you and the sounds, the body, the mind, the soul, the spirit, the individuals are both all at the same modulation, then what happens? Then that means pain, disease, and everything is modulating at the same frequency as the body. And therefore, what can you do? You can intend for that to create itself into wholeness into the body instead of being something that is harming the body, something that is being creative with the body and becoming part of it, remember that, becoming part of it, that it can modulate itself into the body in a positive way. Beautiful. Now, the belief system has much to do with this on your planet. Because if you do not believe it, it cannot happen because your intent will be flawed. So, keep in mind that if you can do this, you can create wellness. I still did not answer the question. Not completely. Yes, our modulations for healing come through the brain. We do not go through the body as you must do for the third dimension. But we do go through our healing processes with sound modulation to the brain in certain areas that affect that part of the body. Now, when we do our brain modulations to help each other, which is daily, we definitely balance ourselves and bring each other into modulation with the perfect balance of who that individual is because as when you're born your modulation and frequency is measured and therefore they know what how to reach the brain and how to help it become a greater being does that make sense to you yeah. everything starts very early sound modulation is the key to many many things the Spirit, the fire that burns within you in the God Spirit also has a vibration and a sound. And it sounds like the universe sounds. When you go into the universe, you don't hear anything, do you? But there is a sound that the universe makes as well. Every molecule makes a sound. So therefore, there is 
sound everywhere, even though it is not audible to every species. If every sound was audible to every species at all times, it would be a conglomeration of sound and noise that you would you would be insane within ten minutes. Yes, uh, just to interrupt, I heard that the way we are structurally made up and having our individual DNA, we are actually a symphony of all our cells and this gives us our own unique resonant vibrational frequency. Is that correct? That is very true. I wanted to speak to you also about creating sound the way that you create sound because you are a creator of sounds or you take sounds that are created and create them differently. Uh -huh. and this is a gift because you understand the modulation e even if it is only once or t one or two densities it is very powerful for the third density especially when one can be able to manipulate and create that is the beginning of where we are we can create and manipulate our modulations and sounds mm -hmm. does this make sense to you Yes, it makes sense because I love um, working with harmonics as well and um, ah, yes. harmonics. So. Harmonics are a wonderful thing. They are a source of enjoyment for us as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much for answering those questions. That was such an amazing little interaction. My infinite gratitude to you. Dan? Hello, greetings. Greetings. Uh, my friend Alex um, has a question. She experienced uh, a blue hather being uh, the other day, and she was wondering um, about where that being came from. Is that a part of the Hathar or Horth Hathor group? It was a, a, a blue um, uh, kind of light question. being. Yes. Let me understand that the blue color, was it a bright blue? I think it was a light blue but kind of um, ethereal to yeah. her. That was a half horn as you called us. Okay. And yes, there was a reason. We work with color quite extensively as well. The blue color gave her peace an understanding and gave you the intention that the Hawthorne individual was there for communication purposes. They deal with your chakra colors but also manifest many other colors that you do not even have in your spectrum. Of course your spectrum is third dimensional and so limited but it is still a beautiful and wonderful dimension because of the emotional intensities that can be reached in such positive and joyful ecstatic ways that we cannot reach but we can reach some forms of it but we must stimulate that portion of the brain that is in control of that and then we can feel it more dramatically like you feel it but oh. this Hawthorne was there to give some kind of communication that is the blue color and yeah. color works very well with sound as you know sound and color together are communications that are far beyond what you have in spoken language she was given a symbol uh, that was placed on the third eye it was kind of a uh, Merkaba kind of shape with a white circle in the center of it and she's wondering what the significance of that symbol is and what she's to do with it it's an awakening symbol that is all okay thank you very much those are all the questions she has today thank you hello this is Sabrina Welcome. Um, my question is, um, <clears throat> first of all, how do we, for those that don't have a healer or by themselves, is there something that people can do on their own um, to, to help themselves? You can help yourself. It takes a little longer, but the energy is within you to do so. The sound waves are within you to help yourself. When you mix your energies with other things, 
the healing process becomes much more quick. Okay. However, you can do it yourself. Yes. Um, and how would anyone call upon you to help them with the healing of the body, let's say, or the mind, spirit? Calling on us, you mean? Yes. It is not relevant. You cannot call on us to help you heal. Okay. We are not in your dimension. We cannot... We can pass over through it, but I am sure it would not be looked at as a positive thing by others in the galaxy or those that are in your particular space around your planet. Okay. Um, the other question I had, I had read uh, that originally the Hathors weren't from this universe. They were not from this universe. That is true. How okay. do you explain another universe? For you, the concept is at this point unfathomable. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It, I believe. Those uh, were all the questions we had for the moment, and I want to thank um, you for coming. Yes, and I, uh, I have one more last Sarah, one. Um, can so I? that others. There is someone come. trying. To okay. Speak. Yeah. 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 Um, so after Sarah asks. Yes. Um, this will be your last question. Then I understand. Yes. Thank you. Is there any advice that you have for me with the Tony? You do very well with your four, first dimensional toning. However, the first dimensional toning is affects the emotional chakras because there is much invisible elements to it. Why is that? Because the purity of the vibration of the Tony causes this. Do you understand? It is a yes. pure tone. Many tones are corrupt. I cannot think of the right word. I understand what you mean. Intention. They are corrupt tones, but these tones are pure. Now, when you when you find the tone when you're doing toning hum along with it find that pitch within yourself let it come into your entire being that entire pitch can communicate to you the purity of that particular sound and that particular emotion do you understand that yes thank you with your toning, you will now become part of the tone, not separate from the tone in any way. And if those around you are told the same thing, they will become part of the tone and not a separation from the tone, not being attacked by the tone in the sense that it is just pouring, hitting them, but they become part of the tone, which is become healing, understanding and a frequency of original thoughts not original but original to you thank you much love much love namaste all right i go now is it was it that you were understanding the things that I was portraying saying to you. Excellent. Well, it came so beautifully. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank Namaste. you. Live in a vibration that uplifts you because that yes. is a sound that is pure. Yes, thank you very much.
you may quote me on that. 